Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome back to The Real Legend of Gaming. We are here with The Walking Dead March to War. Brand new title from The Walking Dead storyline. And, folks, I'm going to tell you, I played it earlier. This is actually a recording of the first 20 minutes more or so. And I'm just going to say I love the game. And you guys already know the motto on this channel. If I don't like the game, I'm not going to cover it and I'm not going to do a review for it. So you already know this is something I'm feeling. We'll go right into the game. It starts off with a storyline, which includes the actual characters from the game. Many that you can relate to from the show. It's awesome. Now, as far as how the game plays, it reminds me a lot of Game of War and that new Final Fantasy 15 game that released on mobile that is similar to it. Difference between those two games and this one is that there is an actual storyline that's tied in and it again it includes characters walking dead series which is what we love and we're able to fall in love with them quickly uh there are a few new characters introduced you see right there we got michonne you got rick and again the storyline is really good um this is taking place somewhere similar to the actual story arc in the show because they make references to Negan and the Saviors. Um, you just saw Jesus. They talk about Hilltop. Uh, characters, new characters, new Amira. So she's going to play a major part in the game. Then you have your character, which is a survivor. That's going to team up with Amira in the beginning. Now, the idea to this game is to build up your base. And again, similar to Game of War, there's different functions for each building that you build. And it's going to have multiple amount of options for leveling up for upgrading for training for um increasing the speed of items so it does have those timer power-ups built in and it also has um the option to skip the building of anything that's less than a certain time period so you're able to you know skip that for free without using any power-ups so here specifically uh, we're making the council the council is basically where you're going to be storing all your new survivors that um, have a storyline. And each storyline allows you to complete chapters which will earn you different items or what they call covers, which will allow you to unlock different characters in the game. Now, it's pretty simple in the beginning. You're really just following the prompts uh, and building everything in your base in order to start. So you build your barracks, which stores your survivors that will you will be using to do raids, which will allow you to go to another area of the map to collect items for your base. Now, Mirror mentions that there's a visitor, so right away you meet Rick Grimes. Now, of course, Rick is going to be his usual himself. He doesn't trust anyone that he doesn't know. However, he wants to keep the peace because he sees that there's potential to become allies at a later point. So this is where you get a chance to name your hero. And from that point on, the legacy begins. You guys already know, DRL. So Rick pretty much immediately understands that you guys are not looking for trouble. And he offers his services at a later point. But for now, he's going to be pretty neutral. He's not going to, you know, obviously Rick doesn't look for trouble unless he has to. So he's basically telling you that. So now this is the beginning. This is where you start piling up resources like food. And then you have to generate it as well and put the resources in a warehouse. So the plot part one, this is basically the area that's going to store the food or in a sense make it for you. So you're going to build a plot and then you're going to put a food pallet there. Once you put the food pallet there, then you got to start making other pallets, which is salvage pallet. Later in the game, lumber pallet and then fuel pallet. So this is kind of like Game of War where on the bottom right hand side of the map you'll have your area where you can put your farms your steel mills um your area where you can make your lumber and stuff like that so as you see there we're building our salvage plot pallet now at this point amira hears something and she realizes that it's a group of walkers so she believes that we can stand up against them so you're going to go on a mission now now in the council, right, this is where you store those members I was telling you about. Each member has a unique ability that will help your raid team. So it's very important to choose the right council member. At this point, we only have a mirror, so 
there's not much selection that we can have. But that is an important part later on in the game. You also have the option to join a community. In a sense, it's kind of like a clan or a guild in which you will help each other you know, with items and donations. So first mission is to clear the walkers. And then it tells you what your rewards are as well. And it gives you a suggestion of what type of party you should use. So for the raiding parties, like I said earlier, you got to choose a council member. And all these members will be leaving your base to go scavenge for items. So remember that once they leave, you're going to be short a certain number of survivors while the mission is taking place. Earlier in the game, it's not a problem because the missions are very short. But as you progress, you're going to need to be very careful and very strategic on who you send out. Now, based on the number of survivors that you choose, it gives you a percentage of the rate of completing a mission. Obviously, 100% is a great look because you know you're going to complete the mission and get great items for scavenging. Now, when the party goes to raid for the mission, that is what you call the march. And that is where you get the title of the game, March for War. The game has plenty of in-game missions that will earn you rewards. So there is always something to do in this game. And I kept playing and playing when I first recorded the gameplay and easily... I was playing for half an hour without realizing like wait a minute folks i cannot make a half hour video so we are going to cut the video probably halfway point of that to give you guys a great insight of the introduction to the game and as usual if you folks like the content hit the like button so that i can know to make more videos like this for the channel and for anybody who's checked me out for the first time and you're still watching the video then definitely continue because we're going to cover a lot and give you excellent insight now at this point here you get to build a satellite the satellite is what you use to search for survivors who will join your team that you can use for raids or for attacking so the first survivor that we found it has a sniper class obviously snipers are always great to have on your team so this is an important part now let's say you find a survivor and you don't want them you have an option to trade for supplies as well and that is something that you will encounter shortly after the introductory stages of the game. Right away, you run into Negan. He did not waste time to find you guys. And of course, Negan is with his usual antics. Basically, he is claiming everything here, saying it's his. But it doesn't say property of Negan. But Negan doesn't care because Negan says that everything belongs to Negan and everybody is Negan. So folks, you know that already from the show. But I just want to show that I watch the show I'm saying show so many times, but you guys get the point. I love The Walking Dead, and I cannot wait for Season 8. Whole another conversation, but back to the game. So cut back to the where you have to create a range. So the range is what you use to train your survivors. This is a very important building, because this is how you upgrade the levels and eventually unlock different skills. Now you have the option of training a survivor or training a council. The councils are basically what you call the heroes of the game. So those are your storyline characters for the most part that have the special abilities and leadership skills. So we upgraded our sniper and you see every category went up. All right, so Mira is basically acknowledging the fact that Negan is not someone that we want to mess with and we need to be careful. I mean, think about it. Negan is a scary dude. You're walking around with that bat, talking to it. I mean, I don't know what's scarier, the, the bat with the barbed wire or the dude talking to the bat with the barbed wire. Insane stuff. All right, so at this point, Amira is re-emphasizing that it's important to scavenge and we need to be able to generate enough resources to now feed all the survivors that we're going to be having on our team and eventually other council members. The only way to build up this base is to have more people. So now we're going to go to the council where we'll start working on Amira's story. It gives you a little bit of information regarding her past. And as you progress along the story, you're able to find out more. Now, if you look at the rest of the council, you see all the characters that are within the storyline that are going to play a part in the game. As soon as you unlock them, obviously. So Mira has um, an early game specialist. She can clear walkers and raids pretty quick. And she's very skilled at capturing landmarks. And if you max her out, which I, I like this feature. If you max her out, this is her skill upgrades and also the base stats that she will have and it's just a little bit of you know storyline from Amira right there this section here is called the promise is truth 
and she's more or less explaining her theory on why everyone came to Washington, D.C. And how she feels that it was not the best idea. I don't want to spoil a lot, folks. I do want you to read it when you play the game. So I'm paraphrasing like crazy. So now, by upgrading the headquarters, which is kind of like your town hall, your castle, it allows you to do two raids at once. And it also gives you the option to upgrade other buildings. And that's something that I didn't mention earlier. In order to upgrade a building, there are requirements. So you cannot just skip and upgrade one building to level 3 or 4. You need to upgrade everything in your base to level 2 before you upgrade them to 3. So that's something to keep in mind and is a very, very important part of the game. And this is where Mir is speaking about the DC concept that I mentioned earlier. Now she's also giving us some insight on Negan, on how she feels he was able to compile so many bases and the reason why he is scattered around the territory over there. She acknowledges the fact that Negan is smart and he's not someone that you can just ambush at one base and expect to beat him. He is well diverse in the area. Now again, we run into Rick. Rick basically wants to team up with the community here. However, he feels more comfortable having someone from his base at our base. So it's kind of similar to when they send Maggie to Hilltop. That's what they're doing with us right now. So we're going to get someone from the Walking Dead series hanging out with us. And we'll be able to use them to raid. And you folks already saw the cover there. We get Carl. So Carl is now officially a part of our base and our community. So that should be really good. And it gives you some, you know, interactions between Amira and Carl. And Carl basically explains why he was sent here. You know, Rick does not trust him. Carl being, I don't want to say gullible, but he's a little more relaxed versus his father. He is a little crazy. We all know that. But he seems to be a little more welcoming to Amira. So with the covers that we receive, we'll unlock Carl, and now he's officially part of the team. Screenshot that, because I just love sharing this stuff on Twitter. Creates great conversation with other players in the game. And we look at Carl's stats. It's pretty cool. And he's great at clearing Walker missions. So we'll be able to use him for those raids that are clearing Walker in the area. And it's funny, one of his skills is called Little Serial Killer, because we know Carl can get a little crazy. All right, so that's it, folks. That was the first 15 minutes of The Walking Dead March to War. And overall, you guys can hear the excitement in my voice. I really enjoy the game. I think it's a lot of fun. And it's one of those games that keeps you pretty addicted in the beginning because you want to start leveling up all your headquarters. You want to level up your bases. You want to level up your um, ranges. You want to... Get as much resources as you can. You want to do raids. So it's a lot of fun in the beginning. And I'm sure at some point, the game is going to get tough because there'll be points where you have to go against other members in other communities. So I definitely encourage, as soon as you feel comfortable with the game, join another community and join one that suits your play style. If you're going to play it active, join an active community. If you're going to be casual, then join a community that is not as aggressive as the other one. And those are just some tips from my prior experiences with games like this. All right, so that's it, folks. If you appreciate the content, again, slap that like button so we can make more videos like this. If you're still watching the video, then hit the subscribe button for future updates for a lot of other titles that we're covering. And if you're a returning sub, appreciate the support, folks. I'm really considering making Thursday mobile game review day every week since that is the day that the games launch on the App Store on iOS. Other than that, peace out, folks. Thank you.